sooner said, no sooner done. She said, get a motor, and we got one. No aching back, no strain, no road. Drop the oars and let her go. That's what you meant, isn't it, Ole? And now there's no far distant shores, no tug, no pull, no rowing chores. No sooner said, no sooner done. He said, get a motor, and we got one. Got one. We got two. Yay, team. Don't have to grind, don't have to crank. Reach right out and give her a yank. Or if she'd rather, my lady knows, just turn the key and away she goes. It's Madam the Captain now, riding high, wide and pretty, cruising for pleasure. It's a rich man, poor man, mother and son, fine fun on the water, second to none, sitting pretty in outboard time. It isn't any wonder you think in rhyme. Brother and sister, say, fill them up, mister. And we don't need tugs or fat old freighters. We plant them where we want them, like your father's potatoes. In the water, that is. There's so many lovers changing to boaters. A special kind of law looks after floaters. And even the law is using outboard motors. But it's not all for pleasure, not all for fun. Work boats go where the work's to be done. Just two men, the boat's not big, but they put their trust in an honest rig, and they make for the open sea. There's a shrimp boat trawling on a calm by you, a sturdy motor and a two-man crew. That's a small-sized rig they're trawling in, but a man-sized catch they're hauling in. And it takes a man-sized motor for the job. It's a shrimp for size, but it sure packs a whale of a lot of power. Dragon for the scallop in a salty sea, motor to the windward, motor to the lee. One small boat and a one-man crew, but two-fisted motors pull him through. Take him there and get him back, too. Trolling for the salmon in the ocean air, out where the big ones rip and tear. You can't go to sea in an easy chair, but two strong motors will get you there. And they'll keep you going, too. Spite of swell and high water. Say, we're catching fishermen now, Ollie. Yes, sirree, they're hooked by the smooth power of your motor. Alaska, Ollie. Remember the first motor you shipped up there? Rugged waters, they said. Well, they still are. Look at the motor on the lifeboat of that fishing trawler. That's what they think of your engine, Ollie, in the 49th state of the Union. There's 49 states and every one Americans boating at work and fun. 49 states, not hard to guess where they find life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They find it on the water only. On a lazy Monday, you slide along the bay, see a big flotilla where it never used to lay. Skippers and passengers away on the job. Comes a happy weekend, comes a happy mob. School's a weekend sailor. Yes, Ole, your engine's doing fine. Better than you hoped in 1909. Who would have dreamed Ole Evan Rood, the owners of your motor, make a mighty multitude? 20 million Americans, 5 million outboards purring along, humming a star-spangled powerful song. 5 million now, how many more? It's 1974. A man's best friend is his motor. In your first full year of production, Ole, your shop turned out 1,000 motors. A fellow named Chris Meyer had enough faith in you to invest $5,000 in your idea. That was a lot of money in those days, but you were a pretty good risk. Bess was your business manager, signing herself B. Evanrude, so your customers wouldn't know they were dealing with a woman. In 1911, the Evanrude company moved into a new plant, hired a hundred shop hands, and produced more than 2,000 motors. Paperwork piled up on Bess even though she hired six assistants. 1912, your plant shipped 4,650 motors. In 1913, 9,412 motors. And that year, your teammates' health began to fail. She was too tired to go on. Bess? Bess? Yes, Ollie? Chris Meyer wants to buy us out. I told him today, we talk it over. If we sell, I have to stay out of the business for five years. I think we ought to sell Bess. Five years. You'll have a chance to get a good rest. And maybe we could travel. Hmm? And uh, 
Have some fun. Hmm? Yes. Two votes for selling, motion carried. You had five years, Bess, to mend your health and see the USA in a brand new touring car. While Oli grew up with Ralph, your only child. Uh, let me have the pliers, Ralph. No, that's not the pliers. Let, let go! Let, let it go, Ralph! Let it... <laughs> Wish you could see how the family travels today. Riding along the highway, everyone looking glad. Mother is sitting pretty, laughing across to Dad. Dad is in the driver's seat, son is at his ease. Daughter humming softly, a song of the summer breeze. It's a riding, gliding over the open way. And riding right behind us, a carload of fun and play. Cutting in the windward, cruising proud and free. Rolling along the highway, heading her out to sea. Fifty horse behind us, a hundred or more before. Taking us through the country town that faces the pleasant shore. Taking us through the village, laughing all the way. Rolling along the highway on a summer's day. Rolling along the highway on a summer's day. Making it through the tall gate, knowing we're almost there. Looking to see the water, smelling it in the air. And there she lies before us, shining in the sun. A million miles of ocean and a thousand leagues of fun. A million miles of ocean and a thousand leagues of fun. You weren't dreaming that big on your long holiday, Ollie. Remember those nights in the hotel at New Orleans? That noise from the street was the sound of gay crowds celebrating Mardi Gras. You didn't even hear it, Oli. Your thoughts were bolted fast to the plans for your next motor. It's all right, Oli. I'm ready to go back to work anytime you are. Oh, Bess. I knew it. I knew it all the time. Bess, we've got a good one. Two cylinders, not one anymore, and we'll build it with that new aluminum. It will weigh less than 50 pounds and give us three horsepower. Think of that, Bess. 27 pounds less than the avenue they're building now, and one horse stronger. Oh, Oli, I've been reading your mind. You want to get back to work as soon as possible, don't you? Yes, well... When we get back to Milwaukee, I'll build a model and I'll offer it to Chris Meyer for production. And when he builds one or two of them, I'm going to test them in the tank. Oh. And I'm going to watch the, the gas. All clean. right, Oli. I'll pack our things up first thing in the morning. Yes. In 1921, you were ready with the motor that changed the world's thinking about outboards. The first opposed twin cylinder motor made of aluminum, machined so precisely that it set a new standard for the industry. You couldn't legally use your old company name then, so you called it the Evinrude Light Twin Outboard. The initials spelled Elto. They also spelled a second success for you and Bess. In all respects, except that occasionally it stalled under turbulent water conditions. First I thought this might be due to the waters affecting the ignition, but I wasn't sure. Therefore, I return the motor to your factory for repairs. I want to thank you for sending me a completely new motor until mine is back in running order. I never expected that, and you can tell the world I am satisfied. Very truly yours, John Delaney, Gloucester, Mass. Dora, tell him that's part of our regular policy, and be sure to thank him for this very nice letter. Now, let's see what else we have here. Here's a fellow with something on his mind. Mm -hmm. Mr. B. Evanrude. 
Dear Mr. Evanrude, that's you, Mrs. Evanrude. <laughs> I have a great itch to travel everywhere, and I have just completed a trip from my home in Portland, Oregon, to Hoboken, New Jersey, by boat with one of your motors. My word. Enclosed are some photographs of our trip that I thought you might find of interest. Let's see those. For heaven's sake. Holy, come here, take a look at this. Hey. That's, hey. That's wonderful, Bash. 